the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This morning we uh, really are in the after feast here. Yesterday we celebrated the feast of the conception of the Most Holy Theotokos to Anna. Uh, this morning we hear the gospel as we just heard it from Luke. Uh, and it's not the first time that Jesus is healing on the Sabbath. It's not the first time that the Jews were indignant about it. And it's not the first time that Jesus reminds them that the Sabbath is not our ruler. And yet the Jews idolize this day. And the leaders of the Jews, at least, idolize this day. And so we're indignant that Jesus would heal on the Sabbath. Some of you probably remember, here in this great state of Massachusetts, a state that I grew up in as well, uh, we used to have the blue laws here. Not that long ago, on Sunday, you couldn't go to the store, you certainly couldn't buy alcohol, uh, and then over time, those things started to open up. Stores, I remember when stores started opening at 1 o'clock in the afternoon or something like that, and they'd be open for a few hours. Uh, eventually, car dealers opened even on Sundays, uh, and even uh, you could buy alcohol in the store. Yet this idea of the Sabbath is really ingrained in many of us here in America. And at least for me, growing up, it was thought that the Sabbath was Sunday. And goodness, if there was any other day of the week that we should be able to get rest, it was Sunday. And yet, the Sabbath really hasn't changed. On the seventh day, God rested. And for us, the eighth day is when we gather together to worship God. It is on this day, the day of resurrection, that the one who fulfills the Sabbath promise, the one who is the Sabbath incarnate, he who is our rest, comes to us to give us a rest that is not of this world. This Sabbath day in the Gospel, Jesus heals the woman who had an infirmity for 18 years. She who was uh, bent over because her bones were not what they should have been. And after all these years, Jesus comes to her and heals her. And it's that healing that made the leaders of the Jews so upset. How is it that he could do this on the Sabbath day? How could he break their laws and how could he put this healing in life over the idol that they had created in this day? What they didn't understand, and perhaps even what time, at times we fail to understand, is that it is Jesus who is our Sabbath rest. See, even today, even though we don't have the blue laws anymore, it can be nice perhaps to think that, or easy to think certainly, that, you know, I've worked hard all week. I put in my hours at work or at school. Saturday we had to wake up to go to sports or we had to do our lawn work and sweat outside. And so when Sunday comes, we tend to think of it as our Sabbath rest. And yet, this day, this day of resurrection, is a day not when we are called to sleep in, but rather when we are called to let Christ come to us and heal us. It is a day in which we come face to face with the one who is our Sabbath rest. It's the day on which we come we who are restless to find our rest in Him who is the rest of the world. Sunday is not the new Sabbath. 
Christ is the new Sabbath. He is the true Sabbath in the flesh, the physician and healer of our souls, our true rest. And so as we gather together on Sundays, as we gather together any day to celebrate the resurrection and the divine liturgy of his church, we do so rather hearing the words of St. Paul the Apostle. Not hearing in our own minds these words that say, well, we deserve a day of rest. But rather hearing those words of St. Paul reminding us that we gather here to withstand the evil day. To stand against this day of present darkness. To gird ourselves with the loin of truth. To gird our loin, should I say, with the truth of Christ. To be face to face with the truth who is Christ. We come here to put on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. To shod our feet with the gospel of peace. To receive the shield of faith the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. These words are not words of laziness. They're not words of sleep. Rather, they're words of action. They're words of our spiritual warfare in which we are placed here and now. This day is not a day of rest in the common sense but rather it is a day to be refreshed and be prepared to meet this present darkness head on. To receive the holy power of Christ and to receive the healing power of Christ. And as we receive that healing power to rejoice in the glorious works that God does in and among us here that we might rejoice with the woman who was healed of her infirmity of 18 years, that we may rejoice with all those who see the healing power of God, and that we might uh, take up this fight that we have been given in Christ against uh, the powers and principalities that are not of this world, uh, and that we might indeed rejoice and give thanks to God who clothes us with these wonderful garments of salvation. I want to give praise to him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and after the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.